Let's get started constructing our particle system. In this video, we're just going to be constructing the base particle system itself and adding our first emitter and changing just a few settings. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to right click here inside the content browser and choose new particle system and it'll ask for some information including the group and asset name. So let's give this a group of particles and name of PS Fire. Now that will show in the content browser and it's also going to open up inside Cascade, which is currently minimized back here in the background. So let me go ahead and enlarge that. Now currently, Cascade is completely blank. There are no emitters. There's nothing in this particle system just yet. I'm going to minimize Cascade away for just a moment. Back here in the content browser, I'm going to select materials and make sure that I have M underscore fire selected. Then we'll re-expand Cascade. And then here inside the emitter list, which is this great big black area that you see, right click and choose new particle sprite emitter. By having that material selected beforehand, you'll notice that it is automatically applied to the particles of our system. Now, I just zoomed in on that. I did that just by dragging with the right mouse button. The controls in here are drag with the left mouse button to tumble around, middle mouse to pan the view, and right click to zoom, just as a quick reminder. Okay, now starting at the top, we're going to be changing some of our module values within this emitter. I'm going to start with the required module. Make sure that your screen alignment is set to PSA square. That's going to keep all of our particles, uh, sprites, perfectly square. They're not going to stretch out or become rectangular. Down underneath sub UV, we're going to set the interpolation method to PSUVIM random. Now, once we get this fully set up, that means we'll be choosing one of the four images of our material at random, but we need to establish the number of images in each dimension. So we're going to set sub images horizontal and vertical to two. Now you still won't see a random selection take place. That will actually come when we add a special module just for the purpose. Let's jump down under spawn. Now inside the properties for spawn, I'm going to expand rate. And underneath rate, you're going to see a distribution. Now at this point, we haven't really talked about distributions, but that's okay. We're just going to kind of go with them for now. I just want you to take note of the word and notice that underneath it, here we're looking at a distribution float constant. And if I expand that, it's just a single constant value, which currently I'm going to set to 35. Underneath we have the rate scale, which I'll expand. We also have another distribution float constant that's currently set to a scale of 1. We'll go ahead and leave that at its default. Now let's also set up the lifetime for these particles. So I'm going to jump down to the lifetime module in my emitter list. We'll expand lifetime, again the word distribution, this time a distribution float uniform. And this uniform gives us a min and a max value. So we can actually specify a random range. We're going to set these flames up to live between 0.375 seconds and 0.75 seconds. So now some of the little tiny flames live for longer than others. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and stop right here. I just want you to get to this point. So let's go ahead and close out of Unreal Cascade. And let's save our package. And that's going to wrap up this video. In the next video, I'm going to talk to you specifically about distributions. Now that you've seen a couple of them, so that you have an idea of what distributions are and how they work, especially with Cascade. <laughs>